Hello everyone, it's Fix My Sauna, and in today's video, we're gonna do a step-by-step -step, um, conversion with Fix My Sauna's uh, universal do-it-yourself kit uh, on this particular sauna. So uh, this is a customer sauna. Um, as you can see, it's, it's an older sauna. Uh, it has a no name or a name that's been out of business for a long time, which is typical. Um, uh, it's got an interior controller and it's got an exterior controller here. Uh, it's got a really old school uh, radio, um, but this is a typical sauna um, that, you, that you saw on the market in between 2005 and 2010. Um, still a really good cabinet on here. The heaters are still really good in this sauna. Um, so the customer decided to put all new components in um, and have basically a, a new sauna working for another 10, 15 years. So uh, the first thing that we wanna go over is we want to look at uh, what we need. Um, to complete this task and then verify everything that we received uh, from Fix My Sauna. So um, the first thing you wanna go through is your box here. Uh, make sure that you have your controller. So you're gonna have your controller here. Um, you're gonna have uh, your connectors, uh, which makes this job so much easier and faster. You're gonna have a power cable here. This is a brand new power cable. Um, we've already verified right there that it's a 15 amp plus it's a one person so we can probably assume it's just going to be a 15 amp. Um, here are your jumper cables here. Um, so this particular um, sauna is probably not going to need the full um, six jumper cables. Um, but you know we are I think it's probably going to take maybe one or two if I had to guess. I have not seen up top yet so we're going to actually go through this together. Um, and then here's your temperature sensor, which is a two pin cable with this little black um, cap on it here. Uh, so we have that. Uh, and then we have your new data cable and new MP3. Uh, this is for Bluetooth. And we will figure that out with this new radio. The customer actually doesn't care to have that radio anymore. They'd rather have Bluetooth. Um, so we might not even hook it up. And then of course your power supply. Now the tools that I have with me here are going to be uh, our handy drill, uh, a pair of wire cutters, um, a voltage tester, which is, this is just gonna test voltage here. I'm probably not gonna use this um, because uh, I can show you guys how to use it. Um, but in, a, in a, a simple install like this, it's not gonna be that difficult. And then of course, a uh, multimeter here if we needed to get into checking um, cables down the, or power down the road. So um, we're gonna get into this. I'm gonna turn the lights on real fast, uh, get everything set up, and then I'm gonna go up top. Okay, so I'm up, up top here. Um, now, again, I've already taken all the screws. This is what we call a dust cover. Um, I've already taken all the screws off of this and I've looked at the power supply that's in here. Um, it actually didn't even have a lid on it, so that must have got lost. Um, but I would say in a power supply like this, um, you're probably on a difficulty level, you're probably like a five out of a 10 because it doesn't have our same um, heater connections on it. Um, but so what we're gonna do first here is I'm gonna just go ahead and I'm going to remove this um, entire piece here, kind of put it to the side so we can get a little bit better idea of what's going on here. So uh, as you can see, I already took the uh, screws off. I left them in there. Um, so it looks like we have a heater connection up here, which is very rare. Usually you don't see that, um, but it is running power um, to the power supply. So the first thing that you need to determine in any, basically any kit here, um, is what do you have what do you have in your current sauna so this has your two speakers um, it appears it has one two three LEDs um, and a stereo in front and then obviously the heaters right so um, again we always recommend you take photos of everything that's in this uh, in this kind of configuration in this power supply before you take uh, anything apart um, but this uh, this system for me is super simple. We've done literally hundreds of these systems. So I'm gonna grab a screwdriver and we're gonna start disassembling things and kind of just get into this um, and show you really how easy it is. Okay, I'm back here. I've got all the equipment uh, laid out here. 
The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably start with the easy stuff here, um, and that is the two speakers. Um, so I'm just gonna kinda look at exactly where they go here, and I'm gonna cut, I'll go ahead and cut this off. This little thing off, this little thing off here. So kinda get a better idea of, get this kinda wire loom taken care of. Um, so I basically have all my white cables coming in uh, to right here. So I am going to go ahead and unscrew this. Just gonna take it all the way out. It's not like we need it anymore. All right, and I'm going to feed those out. Um, so um, this is actually kind of unique. So this this is. So as you can see here, it kind of loops together. What they did is they connected the front LEDs um, with that back LED. So it's all kind of one connection, um, which is fine. You know, that's, that's, it, that's perfectly okay. Um, next, what we're gonna do, so now that we have the 12 volt unplugged, um, we are going to unplug. So, interesting. So the speakers here, um, follow right here and then if you kind of pull these through it's going to be these little tiny wires here um, so you're going to have four wires and then it's going to come into uh, kind of a, a little wire loom here there's two wires actually together um, and these actually are going to go down to the cd player uh, see if i can pour it through uh, it's not going to let me so we're not gonna need those uh, to the, that CD player because the customer doesn't wanna plug those in. So we're just gonna go ahead and cut those, cut and cut. And we are going to feed those through just like that. Kind of get those out of the way here. Okay, so <clears throat> that's easy right there. Um, this is, and this is kind of old school. Again, this is this is actually a antenna and the antenna in this sauna is already actually broken. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and pull that all the way out because we're not gonna need it. Um, probably what I'll do is I'll, I'll pull this out. I'll pull this out and then take this off and then unscrew that. Done. Okay, and take this out. How did I get it all? Let's see. Almost. And I'm just gonna throw that up because we don't need it. Okay, so now that we have that, now we need to find the heaters. Um, so it appears on this particular sauna, um, there's actually only one heater, uh, actually one plug for the heaters, um, and it's right here so i let's see what this is oh no I, I take that back here is another heater um that went down into the front uh probably to connect one of the front heaters so we actually have two heater connections um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to mark and usually like we always say usually the wires for the heaters are going to be thicker wires right so they're not going to be these really thin wires here um, they're gonna be thicker wires or else they should be. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and unscrew those wires. There we go. So that is one of our heater cables there. Um, and our second heater cable is, and actually it's actually this one, uh, they actually have a marked, which is great. So heater, so you have your heater one and your heater two here. Um, so that's fantastic actually. So um, so now next what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this power cable and get rid of this power supply all together. Um, which again, this is your typical power supply, um, you know, that is just absolutely, um, oh, and here's your ground it looks like. So that, that kind of, so pay attention to that. I wasn't even looking. So your heaters here on this particular power supply, um, they don't have three cables. They only have two. And then it looks like they grounded it um, to the main board here. So we're gonna go ahead and cut that one ground. Uh, let's see where my wire cutters went. 
And I'll just go ahead and cut that. There we go. And we can get rid of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up. I'm gonna get rid of this power supply um, so we can actually start putting in um, our new power supply. Okay, so I'm back here and uh, so what we always tell people is, now this is a very, very small sauna, so you probably won't ever run into this problem, and we probably don't see this problem very often. Um, but while, uh, while I was gone there, um, when I went to go place the power supply, our power heaters, or our controllers are going to be, or our power uh, supply connections for our heaters are gonna be over here. Well, when I went to just go test fit it, it wasn't gonna work because there wasn't enough space from this board to this board. Um, so the customer luckily had a multi-tool. I, I might have used something different, um, but I had to kind of uh, strip away this board, which is not gonna make any difference at all to uh, anybody. Um, it's not gonna ruin the structural integrity of the sauna. As you can see, it's split up here. Um, you know, it's there's it's split all over the place So it's not going to make any difference in the integrity of it um, But this will allow us um, but these are little things that might happen um, When you are wiring up a power supply in Especially our power supply because as we remember the old power supply the, the cables came in through this way um, And out so again, that's just something you got to have to deal with a little bit not very difficult Just notch. I just notched the wood out. No big deal. Okay, so let's get to it So I have my first uh, heater cable here, which I am going to connect uh, Right in here just like that. So this is this is our jumper cable. So remember um, remember we talked about the jumper cables, how you need five, and this one we only need um, two, I think is what it was. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this jumper cable come over and and it's already pre-stripped here. So um, sometimes I would, I would cut this to make it look a little bit more clean, but you don't really have to. Um, I'll get some zip ties afterwards and I'll zip tie it over so you can't see it. Um, but remember, we had, this is our heater power, um, our power cable for our heater in the back that runs all the way over here. Um, so it is going to be, and I'm gonna just go ahead and pull these through now. Um, it's gonna be your red and black here. And, and then this is your ground. So super simple. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut these off here. I'm gonna put the camera, I don't know, see if I can. Uh, yeah, I can just go ahead and do that. So I'll just cut these off Just like that And then I'm gonna go ahead and strip them There we go And the ground cable Okay um, so I have these um, all three stripped. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give them a, all a twist. I did forget to do that. So I'm gonna give it a twist here. All right. And the last one. All right, so there's my three cables. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and grab um, these connectors here. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. Nope. Let me grab a couple of connectors. So these connectors are really sweet. So all you really have to do um, is fold these open, right? So fold it open. Uh, let's see, um, that's it. So you fold it open here. And what we're gonna do, so let's just do the ground first here. So we're gonna take the ground wire um, and we are going to insert it into one of these and just click it down. And now it's perfect, right? Um, so now we're gonna take this cable here, which is from our, our new power supply, and we're gonna go ahead and strip it. And put it into the next slot here, put it down, and that's it. That's how easy it is. So, I mean, you don't have to mess around with solder. You don't have to mess around with wire nuts. It's it's just that easy. So um, that's a cool addition that um, 
we at we started adding so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do I'm gonna I'm gonna strip back um, uh, these two the white and the black um, so I can hook those up as well Okay, so I have uh, connected uh, these connectors. Um, so I have the ground here, which is the green. I have my white and my black. Now, just so you know, most Chinese saunas, okay, they're not gonna have typical colored wiring like we would here in the States. And it's gonna throw a lot of people off. In fact, we get calls about it all the time. Um, but in, in 120 volt power, you're gonna usually have neutral in power. Right, so at least with most saunas, um, we're just gonna go ahead and tell you to do black to black and then red to white, um, if those are the colors, right? Um, if not, it's usually, it, it doesn't really matter in 120, um, so it should work, but if your heaters aren't working when you turn it on, just swap them, because then um, that's, that's basically the reason for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect these in. So black to black, white to red. And that's it. That's how easy it is. So again, I'll make this a little bit more pretty over here, um, but that is how easy it is to add our jumper cables to the existing um, wiring in your sauna. So um, again, super easy. I, you know, you really, you really can't mess that up. So, um, so I'm only going to do one of the power, one of the, because uh, this, I don't need to do both here. Um, so I'm just going to do the one, um, show you guys how easy it is. So the next thing that we want to move on to is remember these 12 volt lights here. So we want, what we want is we want um, this power supply and the controller to control the LED light. So the customer is going to want that um, to happen. So um, our LED uh, cable is right here so it's going to be marked it's going to mark it's going to be marked lamp now a word of caution here so this these are leds right if you have a sauna and the power supply has uh, 120 volt lights okay you cannot use this connection you cannot use it okay this is 12 volt only you cannot use 120 volts so um so this, this sauna has LEDs, most sauna has LEDs, but if yours has 120 volt, there's two ways around it. One, you could just completely skip the whole lighting in there and just put puck lights, battery powered puck lights. Um, or if you want the lights on all the time, um, you could um, basically use one of our heater connections, one of our 120 heater connections, um, and then that would have it on all the time if you put a switch on it. Again, now that gets a little bit more complicated, um, but the whole goal here is to get your sauna back up and running and it, the, most of the functions um, that you had before uh, working exactly the same. So, um, so if you can remember, um, we, had, we have these LED lights, these, these three here. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip this down. I'm gonna strip this, I'm gonna strip these, and I'm gonna connect our LED lamps here um, to the 12 volt here. Okay, so what I did um, is I um, I took I just basically cut the wires that from the existing LED wires um, and I put them together like they were before. And now here's a good here's a good tip here. Um, just so you know, again, these Chinese wiring in the saunas are not going to be very easy to understand. Um, but just remember, if it has writing on it, so this one, you see the writing here? If it has the writing on it, most likely that means positive, right? So I did the two writing ones together, so those to the red, and then um, the two uh, that don't have writing on it connected uh, to the black. So now at this point, we have successfully hooked up the heater. Um, and successfully hooked up the LED lighting. Um, the next part that we're gonna get into is going to be um, the speakers. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and 
find all of those speaker cables, get them all set up and ready, and show you guys exactly how to do that. Okay, so the next part of this installation is going to be the controller and the data cable and the temp sensor. So um, the next thing that we want to find is it's going to be this little red cable here. Um, this is going to be your temp sensor. Um, you're going to want to find your little CB. This is your five pin connector and this is going to be your USB, which is a four pin connector. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, little CB radio pin connector here and see how it's got like a little notch on it there on the bottom. So we're gonna have to line that notch up to the bottom here, which uh, should be pretty simple. There it is. And then we're just gonna go ahead and crank this down. Okay, super easy. And then the next cable that we wanna get here is the uh, five pin connector here, which is this connector here. And we're gonna wanna plug it into the connector here where it says USB. Um, so let me see if I can do this. Oh, and when you do this, you see that little notch on the top of this connector? That one's always gonna go on the top. So we're gonna go ahead and connect this. And that's connected. So now we have this connected. And the last part of this is going to be your two pin connector here, um, which is your data cable, or I'm sorry, which is your temp sensor. And again, the little notch on the top always goes, uh, or the little notch always goes on the top. So we're gonna go ahead and connect that. Okay. Now, very important here. Um, most saunas are actually gonna have their own temp sensor. Um, so you can either reuse that hole, and usually it's in the middle of the sauna here. Um, but in this particular sauna, uh, the temp sensor appears to be built into the old temp sensor, or the old controller. So what we're going to do is we're just gonna kind of route this a little bit here, and we are going to drill a hole right here in the middle of the sauna that we can drop this down into. And then what we'll do is we'll just get a little um, uh, a little wire clip here and just put the wire clip on. So I'm gonna get started on that and then I'm also going, but before I do that, so again, this, this sauna was just a, a tad weird. Um, it didn't have the hole to run down your, your two cables here. Um, instead, the hole was just kind of, you know, this big hole in the middle here of the sauna which is right there. So I'm just going to feed these two down and just keep feeding and feeding. There we go. And we can always pull those down later. Um, and so now everything's kind of done up here. Once I get the temp sensor, I'll kind of show you guys how that's actually installed. Uh, but then now I'm gonna set up in the controller part of it and show you guys how we do this controller. Okay, so uh, I cleaned everything up and uh, I just want to point a couple things out. So that's how I mounted the uh, temp sensor. So I drilled a hole. I actually reused um, the clip that was used for the old power cable. Um, you could staple it. You could use pretty much anything, you know, just to just to make sure you secure that that temp sensor cable. Uh, but that's how easy that was. Uh, I strip tied every, I zip tied everything. You know, uh, made it as clean as possible. Um, and I even and then I screwed down the power supply on both sides. So one on this side and one on that side uh, So when you get all done, this is kind of how it all looks. So um, Again, this one was a little bit easier on the top just because we only had one um, uh, Heater cable, but again, you're just taking what I did here and you're just duplicating it for all the other heater cables so uh, that you have so uh, again super simple, I mean and this was this was one that was I would give it, you know, a five out of a 10 as far as difficulty is concerned. Um, and it went together uh, super simple. So now I'm gonna go ahead and, and start attacking uh, the controller down below um, and show you guys exactly how to do all of that. Okay, so inside of the sauna, you're gonna have the control panel that was already um, installed by the current factory. Um, so this one's gonna have screws, so it makes it a little bit easier. So we're just gonna go ahead and unscrew this bezel. And there we go. So once we unscrew this bezel, um, we're gonna kind of see how the, this is, 
uh, wired. Um, you know, again, you know, it kind of is what it is with these these systems. Um, but this is what we call a ju this is a jumper. So this is why a lot of your controllers actually fail, is it has this jumper on it. So we're just gonna go ahead and oh yeah, see here's your temp sensor right here. So they had it actually inside the controller right there. So it doesn't matter. We actually already um, ran a new temp sensor. So I'll get rid of that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to take off all of these pieces here, including the ribbon cable. Here we go. So now I have basically um, the controller and see how it's kind of screwed in there. You see how that the screws are. Um, so I'm going to take that screw out and then I'm going to mount, I'm basically going to mount our controller um, into that. Now, um, in certain circumstances, you're not going to have, um, you're not going to have the same kind of configuration as this sauna. So you might have to just get like a little piece of basswood um, and put the basswood there and then put the, put our, you know, cut the little hole out for our controller and put it there. Uh, but this one should be actually fairly easy for me to do. Um, but see how I was saying, like, here's your, here's your, like, one of your controllers. So it's really weird. Like, I guess, I guess it goes up. So it feeds up through here. See how it goes up? So it feeds up um, through, like, this little channel here, which I try to pull it through. Um, so I can just get rid of this. All right. So I'll just unplug this because so, we're not going to need that. Um, and then this is your this is your power. Now, um, I'm gonna attempt to feed it through here, right? Like I'm gonna attempt to basically feed it through, feed our cables through this hole. Um, it might not be big enough uh, to get through, but I'm certainly gonna try because that will be the cleanest look. So I'm gonna go ahead and try that and try to get it. But that's how. But basically, all you're doing is just taking. Um, you're getting rid of basically everything on this in this out, outside controller because you're no longer going to use that outside controller, right? Like that outside controller is just going to be kind of a dummy controller, um, and the inside is going to be now our controller. Um, like we'll probably I'll, I'll remove this screw here, but I'll just basically fit it in, and then once I get it fit in, I'll show you guys exactly how all the connections go. Okay, so uh, this actually worked out really good. So um, I actually mounted the controller um, to the existing um, frame or bezel here. Um, but what I did on the back is I actually, uh, what, what I like to get for these controllers, because this is typically what you run into, and again, yours might be different, um, but I actually get those little um, uh, ruler uh, mixers at the, uh, you know, in the paint section of the hardware stores but it, cause they work perfectly and they're the perfect thickness. So as you can see, I just cut it to size and now there's no gap on the top there. It, it looks, it actually looks really good. So, um, and then I just kind of screwed it into the sides just like that. Um, and here um, is where I ran. So I ended up taking that little CD player thing out and it, it just opened up all the, I just dropped the cables through really easy. Um, however, I do use, um, I do use one of these, which is, you can get the, this is like um, uh, the strapping they use in, uh, you know, outside on your flowers. So basically in your garden and stuff like that to strap stuff back. It's it's just that, it's just like metal wire. So works really good as a fish. You can buy regular fishes, but I, I use this all the time because it's just the right thickness um, and it works out really, really, really good. So um, what you want to do now is you're going to want to go ahead and let me move this light a little bit. It's like in my eyes. Um, what you want to do is now you, you're going to want to connect. Um, so you're going to have a four pin here and that four pin is going to be connected here on the controller. Um, just like that. So there's actually two here. Um, you only need one. Um, so you plug it in just like that. And then here on your five pin, you want to go ahead and connect that. Sorry for the video. It's just kind of hard to do this with without octopus arms. So, all right, so there you go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount it just like that. I'm going to mount it right back on um, and put the CD player back on. And then I'm going to test it up and see, uh, see how well we did. So. Um, stay tuned. I'm going to get this on and then we'll uh, go through an overview. 
Okay, so here we go. So the last part of this um, little project, and again, this probably took me less than an hour. Um, even with back and forth with everything else, less than an hour. Um, the last thing you wanna do is go ahead and plug your power cable in. Um, so just make sure it's very snug in there. Um, once you get that plugged in, then you can go ahead and you can start the sauna. And I've already done that. So let me get these uh, lights off here. So basically um, what we've done in this is we've kept the outdoor outside uh, uh, CD player for aesthetics. Um, he's not gonna use it. And then we've also kept the outside controller even though it's dead, it doesn't work, right? Um, but for aesthetics, we've actually kept that. Um, and what we found out is when we powered this thing on, uh, one of the LED lights is actually out, which might have shorted uh, the box that we had uh, before, but it's not shorting our box because our box has a lot of protection in it to make sure that even if you do have a short. Um, so I'll, get, I'll go ahead and get one of these ordered for him and we should be good to go. But as you can see here, uh, sauna is all, it's the, you got the LED light on. I can feel the heaters. They are pumping some heat. Um, and then check it out, you got your controller. So uh, I, I went ahead and wired that in. Um, you know, you could turn your lights on and off here. Um, your temperature, 170. You can set how much time you want. Um, you can set up Bluetooth, uh, which I already did on the customer's phone. Um, and then also you have reservation and lock here. Um, so as you can see, um, a successful install. And again, this isn't really that hard um, to do uh, at all. So, you know, at the end of the day, you know, if, if this is something that you wanna do, if you have a cabin or a sauna that you wanna actually replace, all the power supply and all the guts inside of it. Um, this is just a, a super easy way of doing it. Let me get that light back on here. Super easy way of doing it. Um, this customer can start enjoying their sauna almost immediately now. So again, just give you a little recap up here. Um, you know, we basically, we, we ran, or we actually used the heater cable over there, used our jumper, rewired the speakers, rewired the LEDs ran the data cables down, plugged it in, and this sauna is just like, actually much better than brand new. And then you got a power supply up here, just to give you guys a couple um, pointers on this. It has two breakers, okay? So it's got a breaker down here. So if your sauna ends up shorting out, uh, when it's loose, it's fine. Um, when it's tight, that means you, you blew a, be a breaker somewhere, uh, or, you, or you have a wire not right somewhere. And then up here, um, you have this little, this is called a high limit switch here. If, the, if it overheats, um, we actually have, that's a secondary um, uh, protection on all of our saunas, which um, most even new sauna brands don't even have. So um, again, I hope this helps you guys out. You guys saw how easy it is. Again, this is a smaller unit. On the bigger units, you're gonna have to run a little bit more, uh, a few, a couple more heater wires. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's, we've made this so easy. Uh, almost anybody can do it, um, but as a final disclaimer, um, this is a do-it-yourself kit. Um, you know, we don't have any responsibility uh, or liability of how you wire it. We're just providing the parts for you. So again, uh, it's Fix My Sauna. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, uh, or if you want to replace your power supply with a brand new one and a, a brand new controller, now that you've seen how easy it is, um, go ahead and, and shoot us a text uh, or go online and just uh, you can just go ahead and buy it um, You can just go ahead and uh, click buy now and, and you'll have it within a week So if you guys have any questions, uh, let us know fixmysauna.com Hello everyone, it's fix my sauna uh, and in today's video um, we have a side-by-side -side comparison um, of what you would typically find in most uh, infrared saunas um, even some of the very, very top name brands, uh, because you never see this unless you have to replace it so they can go cheap, um, versus uh, what we have in our uh, commercial uh, universal do-it-yourself kit. So um, let's start off by looking at what's typically in an in infrared sauna. So um, this is a little bit older one, so they've evolved a little bit. Uh, most of your saunas are not gonna use, this is a, this is a, a switch mode power supply here. Um, this is converting 120 volt to 12 volt. Um, but, and you also don't see this very much anymore. This is very uh, outdated. Um, but this kind of gives you an idea 
how everything's kind of configured and how cheap it is. Um, for example, check out these relays. This, these are your power relays and heater relays. Um, just super cheap. Here's one of your heater relays here. I mean, just look at the size. Look at how small. I mean, the, the, the comparison, just for example, this relay here is about 43 cents, right? The relays that we have in our power supplies are over $4 a piece, right? So that kind of gives you an idea of the the cutting cost of, of what they generally put in a power supply here. Um, there's not a lot of safety um, uh, uh, at all in this box. In fact, um, the only thing you have is an overpowered uh, or overpowered um, uh, breaker. This is a 32 amp breaker, okay? This sauna, is a it's a 15 amp sauna. It plugs into a standard outlet. So, you know, it, I don't even think this breaker is actually, even if you had a short, is actually gonna short out uh, on, on the 15 amp unless you got a lot of power going through it, like you put 240 through it, right? Because uh, it is a 220 box, it appears. It's a 120, 220, right? So it can do either or. Um, but look at the board, look at how just disgusting the board is, how cheap it is, just very low, low quality. So when people ask us, uh, you know, via text, like, well, there can't be that big of a difference between what's in my sauna, because I paid $5,000 for my sauna. Well, this is what you typically get, even in a $5,000 sauna. So maybe it's a little bit more evolved. Um, now let's dive into our power supply. So this is a good 15 years of R&D and of, of kind of figuring it out, right? A lot of companies can come out with a product, but it takes years. Um, you know, there's there's famous car brands that, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, the first like two or three years, another problems, right? So um, let's get into the safety. This has the appropriate actual breaker built into it, uh, appropriate size. Um, so that's the first stage of safety. The second stage of safety is a high limit switch, okay? So this high limit switch here is, is uncommon in, in almost every power supply that we've ever seen. Um, this high limit switch basically will cut the power in your sauna if it detects high heat. So anything that's uh, abnormal over uh, what's being produced in the power supply. So if there's a, a fire in it, or if something is shorting out and causing a massive amount of heat that could cause a fire, it's gonna shut it off. Uh, almost immediately. So there's two levels of protection in this power supply. Secondly, we have two very high density heat sinks right here, this one and this one. Um, you can see our relays are much more, much higher end, uh, much more expensive. Our board is very clean, very organized in the way of, of how it's configured and how it's marked. It's a professional way of building a power supply. Um, and that's why the cost reflects it because this power supply is gonna last 15, 20 years. We give you 10 years guaranteed, but this power supply is built to work commercially for 10 years and uncommercially 15 to 20 years. So um, I hope this helps you guys. Again, we usually send out like, you know, we, we can tell you all day long that our power supply is so much better than what you have now. Um, but this actually gives you um, uh, you know, proof actually looking at it to see what you're buying. So um, I hope this helps you guys out. If you guys have any questions, uh, you know, or want to purchase one of our universal do-it-yourself kits, just uh, send us a text. We just need your um, control panel here and a picture of your power supply. Uh, and we can give you a level of difficulty of between one and 10 of how hard it's actually gonna be for you. Um, but we've built this to be as easy as possible and as universal as possible for almost every sauna that's out on the market. So again, I hope this helps you guys out. It's Fix My Sauna, we're always here for you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, shoot us a text. Um, have a great day.